Welcome to my YouTube channel guys. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to get a distinction on math literacy. So, it is not that difficult. In fact, it's not that difficult at all. It's very easy to get a distinction on math literacy. Anyone can pass math literacy. And I've heard that some of you have challenges on math literacy. That's why I started teaching math literacy. So you can subscribe if you have challenges so that you can learn how to tackle those challenges. So guys, without wasting any time, I'm going to be giving you study tips on how you can get a distinction on math literacy. So listen carefully. So this is it, guys. Make sure you listen carefully and take down some notes because everything I'm saying here is very important. To achieve a distinction in math literacy, here are some steps you can follow. Number one is to understand the syllabus. Go through the course syllabus truly to understand the topics covered and their weightage in the exams. This will help you prioritize your studies and focus on the areas that carry more marks. Which areas carry more marks on Met's lead? We talk about income tax, we talk about taxations, we talk about uh, tariffs also carry more more marks. Measurements don't really carry that, that marks, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't practice it. Number two is attend classes regularly. Make sure you attend all meds, meds literacy classes to grasp the concepts and explanations provided by the teacher and participate actively, ask questions and take notes during the, during when the teacher teaches. I almost said lectures, guys. I, I almost said lectures, but I forgot that you are being teached by teachers. So we're going to stick to teacher. Teachers. You're during teachers' classes. Number three is practice regularly. Mass literacy requires practice to gain mastery. Solve a variety of problems regularly, including application based on questions to develop your problem solving skills. Practice your questions. From test books, past papers, and online resources to broaden your understanding. Test book, past papers, and past papers really help very much. Really help in when you're studying maths. I don't care which maths you are doing, whether pure maths or maths lit. You have to study using past papers. And number four, which applies to all the subjects, is to seek for help. Seek help when needed. If you encounter difficulties with certain topics or questions, reach out to your teacher for clarification. Don't hesitate to ask for help or guidance or consider forming study groups with classmates to discuss and solve problems together. That's number four. Number five is create a study schedule. Create a study schedule. Divide your study time effectively and allocate sufficient time for each topic based on their weightage. Create a study schedule that allows you to cover the entire syllabus while leaving sufficient time for revision and closer to the to the exam. What's what's so funny about maths is that anyone can actually do it compared to pure maths. Pure maths, pure maths, you cannot do it, especially when you didn't start it at grade ten. You cannot just say you're gonna do pure maths at grade eleven. You will get like three over hundred. I've seen shocking stuff. People get three over hundred. Others get even zero. Imagine you get nothing, but you are not there. Number six is review and revise. Regularly review the topics. You have to be. You have to cover to reinforce your understanding. Allocate dedicated time for revision in your study schedule. During revision, focus on practicing. More, more difficult questions and identifying any areas where you need further improvement. Practice more difficult questions. So, what's so special about you right now as you're watching this video is that I've got a solution for that. You can subscribe to my channel where I help learners with Met's lead. I tackle difficult questions. And number seven is use resources and practice exams. Make use of various resources available such as textbooks, study guides, and online tutorials and practice exams. Online tutorials, you already got that one because that's me. The resources can offer additional explanations, examples, and 
practice questions to help you strengthen your understanding and your familiarity with the subject matter. That's number seven, guys. That's number seven. Number eight is develop exam strategies. Understanding the exam format and structure. Familiarize yourself with the types of questions asked in previous years, previous question papers. We talk about question papers by the week. Yes, papers. Practice time management during mock exams to ensure you can answer all questions with the given time frame. You can also practice using, uh, using, you can just say, set the stopwatch and, and tackle the previous question paper. Number nine is seek feedback, which is something that you can do if you want. It's not a must. Whenever you possibly seek feedback on your practice exams or, assign, or assignment from your teacher or tutor, use your, their feedback constructively to identify areas for improvement and adjust your, your study plan accordingly. Number 10, stay motivated and confident. Believe in your abilities and maintain the positive mindset. Stay motivated by setting small goals along the way and celebrating your achievements and confidence combined with consistent effort and practice. And will practice will contribute to your success in obtaining a distinction in math literacy. So guys, that's it. It's very simple. It's not really that difficult. Maybe after I will, I will do uh, talk about accounting, which accounting is the, one of the subjects really impossible to get a distinction but my sister did it once i myself couldn't get a distinction there but i can actually get a distinction in any subject but except for accounting accounting is the most difficult subject in the whole world but we are not talking about accounting we'll talk about later uh, if you have struggles with accounting you can also subscribe to this channel because i'm going to be tackling some of the difficult things in accounting also so guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video and share the video so that others will get the same information that you got. Peace. See you on the next video.